Hey guys, hi, how are you? Today I bring you the 2023 Chevy Corvette. It's been nearly 70 years since the original Corvette, one of the most iconic cars in automotive history in the whole world. For 2020, Chevrolet introduced the latest generation known as the C8. Now without controversy because some purists believe that the car should have been left alone in its original recipe with the engine in the front, traction in the rear. So in this video, I want to find out if this mid-engine Corvette is still a Corvette. Are you guys ready? Let's go. By the way guys, I borrowed this car from a viewer here in Calexico, California. So this morning I drove 120 miles to drive this car. Right now it's about 100 degree weather, so it's pretty hot, but I couldn't miss out on the opportunity to drive this 2023, not 22, 23 Chevy Corvette. I got a spoiler alert. When you get to the driving portion of this video, I'm not gonna trash this car. This has less than a thousand miles and it's somebody's pride and joy. This is not a press car, this is not a loner. So I feel bad being heavy footed on a car that I borrowed. It's a huge liability, but a huge honor as well to be able to drive some cool cars like this one. So if you have a car that you would like me to review, please drop me a line on the email address in the description box. Back in 1953, the original Chevy Corvette came with an inline six cylinder that produced 150 horsepower. That car cost about $3,200, which in today's money would have been something like $35,000. So as you can see, the Corvette has grown in price, displacement, and basically in all directions. For 2023, the Chevy Corvette comes in two versions, coupe and convertible. This one being the coupe with the removable top. The Corvette comes in three trim levels called the 1LT, 2LT, and 3LT. This one here is the 2LT, which I think is the trim level that makes the most sense. The 1LT coupe starts at about $66,000, and for about $7,000 more, you get the 2LT, which has a few features like the better audio system, a head-up display, navigation system, front and rear cameras, a much needed and appreciated heated and ventilated seats, memory seating for the driver, and a performance data video recorder, a rear camera mirror, wireless charging, and folding side mirrors. It's hard to talk about packages because of the supply shortage. So some of these features may not be available even they're part of the 2LT package, but know that the 2LT package gives you access to options not available on the basic 1LT. The top of the line 3LT is about $4,000 more than this one right here. And it offers better seats, a nice interior leather package, and it unleashes options not available in the 2LT like the 70th anniversary edition package. This particular one has the nicer 20 inch wheels that are forged wheels, a few other options like front lift adjustable height memory. I drove it today and when I was getting it out of the house of the owner, I had to lift the front because otherwise it would have scraped. So it's a nice feature to have, but you only have access to it if you go above the one LT. This particular one has the 20 inch wheels in the rear that are forged. I'm not in love with glossy black wheels, but it's a matter of taste. These are 305s by 30, uh, 20 inch wheels. Um, as I said, I like the design, not so much the finish. So that's an option. And up front, you have this 19 inch wheels. So it's staggered, it's pretty nice, pretty aggressive. I just wish that they were not glossy black. The total sticker price of DC8 was $78,475. And the proud owner told me that the dealership was asking a $25,000 markup, but he was able to negotiate down to $10,000. The initial warranty of the C8 is precarious. I mean, the limited warranty is three years and 36,000 miles, while the powertrain warranty covers five years and 60,000 mile warranty. So, you, and you only get one complimentary maintenance cover for the first visit. Remember, at the end of the day, this is just a Chevrolet. So you won't get the longer customary warranties offered in premium vehicles that are usually four years and 50,000 miles or more. And I wish GM offered a longer initial warranty on the Corvette, even if it meant rebranding the Corvette as a standalone brand within the GM umbrella. That's just food for thought. Let's talk about the engine of this car. So we're gonna do a cool Remote start right here. Yes, let's go to the rear. I really like this design, this electromechanic. So all you have to do is push it down and it's gonna close itself. And then you have the stingray right here and then you open it right here. So it just killed the engine. I wonder if I can start it now with the hood open. Let's try the remote start again. No, it doesn't. This engine is a 6.2 pushrod V8 direct injection engine that produces 490 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. This engine is mated to an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission that you can manually shift 
using the paddle shifters mounted on the steering wheel. The fuel economy for this one is 16 in the city, 24 on the highway. While the C7 still offered a seven speed manual transmission, the C8 lost that option. But remember that the C7 had a conventional torque converter automatic transmission instead of this more modern dual clutch transmission. And this is the first GM product that uses a dual clutch transmission, but it's not the first time it offers a mid-engine car. I remember two in particular, the Pontiac Fiero of the 80s and the Corvair from the 60s. And let me know in the comments if you think that I missed another product that was made by GM that was also a mid-engine. The transmission has been the weak link of this current generation. So hopefully for 2023, all the issues have been sorted out. This is the soft closing that I was telling you about. So you just press it like this and it closes itself. Let's go to the interior to open it. You will see a door handle right here, but it's underneath this trim. So you open it, also electromechanic. And now we are in the car. It's kind of easy to get in considering where it is. So GM made sure that this was accessible for older people because they look at their current demographics. Look at that nice silhouette of the Corvette going on. But to start it, we go right here. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this interior on video and pictures, I didn't like it because of this center column right here. It's just too much. It's, it's the elephant in the room. I couldn't get over it, like literally, it's like so high. But when I see it in person, it looks a little better. I still don't like all these buttons right here. I don't like it, especially in an era where most manufacturers are taking a break from buttons and implementing more controls in the touch screens, this has a lot of buttons like what you will find like in a porch and stuff like that. But other than that, I think the materials are, are good. I think that GM has made a great effort into improving the fit and finish of the interior of the Corvette. To me, it has always been the weak spot of prior generations. In the case of the C8, all the controls, the switch knobs and all that are located with the driver in mind, including the infotainment system that is kind of tilted towards the driver, which renders the passenger unusable as a DJ on road trips. The transmission controls are right here and take an extra second to get used to it, but it's honestly pretty easy. As far as everything else, you get to configure the cluster to your liking. It has many modes. I was playing with it earlier and it's actually pretty user friendly. This car has a lot of features because as I said, it's a 2LT. So it has a few options that are not available on the base model, like the nicer audio system. And then I was surprised that it has memory sitting for the driver but also for the passenger. So that is pretty cool. Some of the uh, shortcuts that GM took with this car is like this flimsy vent controls right here. <laughs> I feel like they're gonna break in time, but this is a total departure from prior generations. I drove both the C4 and the C5 and those cars had atrocious interiors, but this is not the case of the C8. I never drove the C7. I was, I've never been inside the C7, but I've seen pictures. And this interior looks miles ahead of the C7. These are ventilated and heated seats. And honestly, this car is very well put together. I think that this is the car that I was expecting GM to build in my lifetime. This feels like real metal right here, as well as here. And all these buttons feel of high quality. Honestly, I, I do like it. When it comes to the steering wheel, I didn't like it at first when I was seeing it in pictures and on video, but same thing with the center console. Now when you see it in person, it kind of makes sense because it has a flat bottom and a flat top right here. So when you're driving, it doesn't have an obstruction of the instrument cluster right here or the head-up display up there. The steering rack is telescopic, so it is very easy to find the perfect sitting position. And as I mentioned earlier, it has this cool rear view camera that has an, an unobstructed view of the rear because this car, even though it's very low, it offers great visibility up front and to the sides, but the visibility in the rear is really bad if it wasn't for this camera. Not available on the 1LT, it is available on the 2 and 3LT, and I'm glad because it does offer a pretty high definition image of stuff behind you. The new platform allows the C8 to have slightly better room and it has two trunks, one in the front and one larger one in the rear. And these two compartments add to the relative practicality of the C8. This column right here is part of the chassis. So it's covering a major component of the chassis in this car. So I just don't see how they can implement a manual shifter, but it definitely needs a revision. 
The 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system offers a mobile hotspot and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability. The system is very responsive. I was playing with it earlier and I was surprised with the level of customization that it has. Let's talk about the exterior. To open this door, just press this button right here. And it's pretty nice. And if that fails, then you have an extra way of opening this right here. So it has the little icons on what to do, how to open it, and it's manual in case that one fails. The exterior of the Corvette is simply stunning. With the mid-engine design, it gains supercar proportions, even if I believe that it lost some of the iconic looks of, that made the Corvette look like an unmistakable Corvette among other sports cars. Because now, look at this hood, it's shorter. So I think GM had a hard time trying to keep some of the iconic cues of the Corvette with this car, just because this is a mid-engine car, so this front end is way shorter than it used to be. So remember, most Corvettes of prior generations had some bulges right here and then had extended flares to the sides and most of them offer a scoop, but there's no need for a scoop because there's no engine underneath there. The front end is low and very aggressive with slim headlights that are full LED with double running lights and LED turn signals and no fog lights. It does have functional vents right here that are massive. And then in the center, you have this trim piece that is black and then it offers two vents, one on each side, and then also a camera here and a camera on the other corner as well. Let me know what you guys think about this. Does it still look like a Corvette? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. I think there's more sunlight on this side, so let's switch for a little bit. The profile, the C8, makes a statement with these huge nostrils that provide breathing for the engine. In my opinion, the coupe version of this car is the one to get because you can still remove this top and you can still see this beautiful engine through the glass, unlike the convertible, which blocks this whole area. So you cannot see that beautiful 6.2 engine that is laying right there. Also, the convertible costs about $8,000 more. So to me, this makes more sense. The oval shaped taillights are gone. I mean, they were gone for the C7, but now they look more like the Camaro. You do have this functional vents right here and gone is the quad exhaust that the c7 had right there so i used to like that now this grill right here looks very aggressive like a real sports car that it is right so now instead of the quad exhaust right here you have double tips on the corners so it looks good but it doesn't look like a corvette to me but it is a beautiful stunning car look at this angle right here it does look like a Stingray, right? It's just that it doesn't have the traditional elements that made a Corvette a Corvette. And also because this is a mid-engine car, it's gonna have these scoops right here, like every other mid-engine car. So that's why this car looks like other exotic cars, like maybe the McLaren. I do see a little bit of Acura NSX. Let me know what you guys think. Does this look like any and every other mid-engine car? Another question I have is, was moving the engine from the front to behind the driver a must in order for keeping the Corvette competitive against other sports cars that are twice, thrice, four or five times the price? I think so, but I do want to hear from you. Look at this detail right here. Beautiful. Finally driving the Chevrolet Corvette C8. It's a long process to get to this point in the video. I've been here all day shooting and because I'm such an amateur, it takes me a long time to do all the prep. Luckily, I found this empty ghost town on the north part of Calexico and I was able to hide the car and shoot in peace. I think this car in person is wider and it's much lower. It doesn't matter what you see on the road. It's not until you stand right next to the car that you realize that this car is a white car. This car right now has 787 miles. So it's, it's almost brand new. The owner told me that before 500 miles, this car will, will have like a, like a rev limiter because it's the, the way to protect the engine uh, from revving it too high, too high while it's still settling, while you're still breaking in the engine. He said he had that issue, but now I guess he put over 200 miles on the car. So past the 500 miles, that went away, even though he went to a dealership and that's why they told him. <laughs> he told me that I could drive it like I stole it, but I, you know, this is where I draw the line. And I know these videos, uh, people want to see people going crazy with these cars. But at the end of the day, this is somebody's car. And I just feel bad uh, driving like I stole it. Even though he said, hey, has insurance, <laughs> drive it however you want. I'm not going to do that. It's uh, 0 to 60 and I think, um, I think it says somewhere like in the low threes. 
And if you get the sports pack, the performance package on this, you can, you're able to bring it below three seconds. But this one doesn't have it. It's just a regular 2LT, um, but it's plenty of fast. I have driven dual clutch transmissions before, so I kind of know how they work. For those of you that have never driven one, these transmissions give you the impression they're, that they're kind of jerky because they're doing the shifting for you. This is a manual transmission that is being automated. This car will shift faster than a, any human can without losing uh, momentum. So when you're driving it and it downshifts, you're gonna feel that. But just those of you that have driven manual transmissions, just try to remember how it feels when you start downshifting. Well, it feels the same. We're gonna put it in manual right now just to show you how quick, insanely quick these gears are. doesn't drive like an automatic trust me when I say that would it be nice to have a stick shift maybe maybe for those of us that enjoy throwing our own gears maybe you feel that the car is more engaging when you do your own gears but this is amazingly quick this owner told me that he used to have a c5 that he had to sell to go on a business venture so he had to sell the car to be able to fund his business and apparently business must be doing well because look at him now he got the car of his dreams reliability um they've been reading a lot about the problems that they had with this transmission in earlier uh, models like the 2020 2021 22 but apparently they've revised this transmission so it's supposed to be better and more reliable but gm you know has their history with reliability so if i were to buy this car i will definitely buy an extended warranty if i'm planning to keep this car long term because that warranty as i said earlier is very short only three years and thirty-six thousand miles this engine has been around with different variations for years but um, the rest of the parts you know this transmission you know the coil over suspension um, the differential this i don't think this one has an lsd correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think the lsd stock in the 2lt i think it's only on the 3lt but i'm not sure so i don't want to mislead you on that one let's take this rural road rural road notice how i struggle rolling my r's This car has so much more to give, but we're not gonna press it. The downshifting, red matching, very seamless. You wanna try that one more time? Because I do. Be honest with you and i'm trying to be unbiased but i feel a little bit of a light front end when you press this car but this may be a combination of lots of power towards the mid and back of this car and very little weight in the front i don't know if it's a bad thing so i'm not i'm not gonna ding it for that it's just what i feel i'm just giving you my reactions when i press on the accelerator i feel like the front wheels are floating Can you hear that? Are you gonna dare to tell me that you can shift faster than that? Do I miss the extra pedal? Mm, maybe. I don't have an issue with anything in this car. Forget about what I said about the center console. Is it my favorite part of the car? No, but will I turn away this car for this center console? No, it's just there. I hope they revise it though. It's time to give it back to the owner and give you my final thoughts on the car. This has been my review of the 2023 Chevy Corvette C8. I think it's a great car and I think GM knocked it out of the park for this generation. It is a big departure from engine up front, traction in the rear to this mid-engine design that in my opinion takes the Corvette to the next level and makes it a bargain supercar. And that pushrod 6.2 engine sound reminds you that you're still driving traditional American performance, but now with a world-class chassis with infinite potential. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.